you can really own it, you know. Mm-hmm. And when and do you ever, Dana? Do you ever? Thank you. What a compliment. That was a dream of mine when I first moved to New York and met John Diamond and saw that performance of Otis at Monterey um, on a video John had. I was just like, oh, my God, I have to do that someday. Goosebumps, years, right, Dana? What's that? Goosebumps, right? Big time goosebumps. I mean, tears, yeah. goosebumps, all of it. Um, and then, you know, the Beatles songs, uh, it's just getting into a character and getting into a great song. Fortunately, I've I've never really had to sing a song that I didn't like. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how that would be to be given a tune that just absolutely sucks and have to put your all into it. <laughs> yeah, what was that like by, in Across the Universe? Did they say to you, okay, Danny, you're going to sing these songs? Or did yeah. they give you a choice of maybe ten and say, which ones do you want to do? No, no. My character had her specific song. Right. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. Carved out, and, and I was overjoyed. I mean, I can't think of a Beatles song I don't like, so... yeah. You know that they could have thrown any Beatles at me, and I would have been pretty thrilled. But yeah, I, I really, I loved singing each of those songs. What was it? What was it like working on the film? I mean, you know, that is across the universe is one of the best Beatles themed movies I've seen, and I'm a first generation Beatles fan, so I've seen them all. Wow, and you were the ones we were most scared of, so that's awesome. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it was actually like a history of the Beatles, and subliminally. Yes. That was Julie's intention. So brilliant that you picked that up, and I'll have to tell her because, you know, it's been a while, but I love that people still mention the film. It was amazing. I, that was in 07 you made that, I believe. Yes. 06, 07, yeah. I felt like I was, I was in a dream every day. I mean, it was quite crazy. The most exciting part was in the very beginning when we had to rehearse every day. It was like a live play. We'd go to this, these studios in Times Square, and we would do a reading in the songs. We'd do an actual like play-like performance of it for whoever Julie invited every day, 10 to 6, for a few months, just to really mm. get it in us. And then, yeah. of course, going into the soundtrack with T-Bone Burnett, who was so right. exciting. I had a blast. <laughs> I got to meet Joe Cocker. and Elvis Costello came by one day. I was thrilled. Wow. Um, you know, it was just it was a dream come true. Actual filming can be a little boring. You stand around a lot, and it takes yes, a couple hours Yes, that's what I get. understand. Anyway, here, you hear so many people say that, yeah. Yeah, you got to stay away from the craft service table. You start eating <laughs> snacks. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to be fat if the production Sex and Sadie's on. pants are getting a little tighter than the first uh, first. Yeah, well, you know, I and know. they did. I swear <laughs> no. to God, they actually did. <laughs> um, you know, I think th- you realize this, but now you know you're always going to be a part of the Beatles fan family. Once you've acted or, or associated yourself, and that's nice because, uh, you know, all the success you're going to continue to have There'll be one or two people in the audience say, hey, I loved you and across the universe. That, that's, that's a nice feeling, isn't it? It's a wonderful feeling, I have to say, because I felt so great about that film. And, and you know, it, just had such, it was such a magical time in my life that, you know, it's always going to be one of the <sighs> career highlights or mm-hmm. life highlights for me. Um, so it's really always nice to see somebody at a show who was there with me, you know, in, in mm-hmm. spirit and saw the film and loved it. Now, Dana, when, when, when the right role comes up for you again for acting, uh, will you have to kind of give up your performing for, um, you know, for however long it takes? Are you willing to do that? Or do you even have to give up performing? Uh, well, singing, I mean, of course. If, you, if you're asked to do a film, I mean, it depends on the film, but, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to be filming several months and they own your schedule. You know, I did another small part in the film shortly after Across the Universe, and it was in the middle of making a CD, so I was flying back and forth from New York to New Orleans where we were shooting, and that was just a small part, and it was pretty time-consuming. So, you know, after Across the Universe, and I got a big L.A. uh, film agent, and they said, okay, now take a year off and come stay in L.A. and go on auditions every day, and I just couldn't do it. I was ready to hit the road and do music. Mm Mm-hmm. So I did have to make that choice, and, you know, who knows? If I'd stayed in L.A. for a year and gone on a film career, it could have been a very different path. Mm -hmm. could have been a very frustrating one, could have been a very successful one. I'll never know, but I don't regret the decision to just take my music on the road, because that's what... Yeah, that's what I was dying to do. Yeah, well, you seem very happy in the in the uh, DVD. I mean, you, you can hear it in the CD, but to actually see the performance, it, it's obvious. You know, you you love being on the stage. I do. Uh, was, I like playing me more than another character. Right? Yeah. 
We're speaking with Dana Fuchs, everyone. Her brand new CD, DVD package has just been released today on November 11th, Songs from the Road. Um, now, you're, you're, a, you're a young woman, Dana. When did you first become aware of Janis Joplin? I remember a friend of mine when I was a kid coming over and she had a recording of Janis and my dad was not really a big Janis fan. So, I mean, he was such a great music fan. I grew up on Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, Ray Charles, Billie Holiday, but he wasn't a Janis fan. He just thought she was crass and she screamed all the time. So I really never got into Janis until actually I was asked to play her in the off-Broadway show. Mm -hmm. As soon as I opened my mouth singing in New York, I was getting the comparison, but I had never really listened to Janis Joplin music. I knew Bobby McGee. I knew Peace of My Heart. Yeah, the hits, right. Yeah, Yeah, of course. Um, And in fact, when I did the audition, I remember running to John going, oh, shit, I don't really know a full Janis song. Help me. And he (laughs) helped me learn Peace of My Heart, and that's what I used for the audition. Uh, But, you know, it wasn't until having to learn 20 songs by her, read about her life, and get inside her as a person to play her that I realized, oh, my God, what a missing link in my music library. Mm-hmm. I was just utterly blown away. I remember I would listen with headphones because I had eight days to learn 20 Joplin songs and 52 pages of dialogue. Aye, aye. How, do you, how did you do that? I, a rhetorical I question, but I mean, how did you do that? <laughs> I just shut down everything. I was fortunately making enough of a living doing voice commercials for MTV, so that only took, you know, an hour a day. Mm. And I just lived, ate, and breathed Janis Joplin in headphones, walking everywhere I went, traveling everywhere I went. I just lived it up all night, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. um, and every day worked with the musical director of the show. I'd meet him, and it was intense. It mm. was very daunting and very scary, but... It was so exciting, and yeah. I became a huge fan. I mean, I just had no idea that a girl between 24 and 27 was ever singing like that. It was right. incredible. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we're speaking with Dana Fuchs. Dana, I'm going to let you go after a couple more questions. I appreciate sure. so much the time you've given us. And I didn't think musicians are even awake until Tuesday at 2 in the afternoon. We're, we're <laughs> taping this on a Monday, pre-taping. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you getting up and doing the interview. My pleasure. Um, Thank you. I'm a New Jersey native. Where in New Jersey were you born? New Brunswick. Okay. My mom was from a small town called Milltown. Mm-hmm. And my dad was from the Bronx, but then moved to that town, and that's where they met. So I was born there, but I, you know, I was raised in Florida. I was a baby when we moved right. to Florida. Yeah. So, But all my siblings, because I'm the baby of six, you know, were born in New yeah. Jersey. Um. Guys, you can get so much information on DanaFuchs.com. And um, last question, Dana. If you had one week, no obligations to anyone but yourself, how would you spend that week? Reading all of the books that have piled up. Mm. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, I, I love, good for you. I love reading books as well. Yeah. I, you know, I guess you must look at the piles of, of things you you just don't have time for and say, "Am I ever going to get to those things?" I mean, you will because you're you know you're at a young enough age, but <laughs> you say, "My gosh, there's so many things." It, it oh, shows how true. much you must love your your craft to put those things aside for for the time being. I do. I love what I do. I feel so blessed to be able to do it and you know sustain a, at least somewhat of a living, so you know I can just focus on it. Um, everyone, after you've purchased and listened to and, and reveled in songs from the road. Some of Dana's uh, other works that you, you definitely would want to get into. We have um, Bliss Avenue, Lonely for a Lifetime, live in New York City, 2008. I love the fact, by the way, Dana, <clears throat> that on the DVD, there's a little, a little bonus song, Love to Beg. Uh, that's not on the CD, but you do, it is included on the, on the performance DVD. I, I, I thought that was a nice touch to give a little something extra on the DVD. Yeah, you got to, you know. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> Felt needed a little bit of boost, and Love the Bag just made sense because that was the release prior to Bliss Avenue, and I was right. trying to just really get a little bit of each album in there. Mm. Uh, we've been speaking with Dana Fuchs. The oh my gosh, talented is just doesn't doesn't even do you justice, Dana. I was thinking of a song that I could finish off with from 
from Songs from the Road. And I love them all. <clears throat> I've narrowed it down to six songs. So what I'm going to do, Dana, I'm going to tell you the six songs I've chosen. And could you tell me which one you would like me to finish with? Ooh. How's that for putting you on the spot? That's totally putting me on the spot. Um, and, well, here's, here are the six I have. And if you can't pick one, I'll choose one. But here are the six that I've narrowed it down to. And again, I hate to do things like this because every song is a winner on the CD. But I have Summer Song, How Did Things Get This Way, Bliss Avenue, Set It On Fire, Handful Too Many, or Living On Sunday. Oh, okay. I mean... My Living on Sunday and Summer Song came to my mind when you asked me, and also Long, Long Game, because that's sort of my road life. Uh, you know, that song was written about being on the road, and I just had a dream about it last night. So, <laughs> well, Why don't we go with that one, then? I didn't even mention that, but that's another great song, Long, Long Game. How about if we finish with Long, Long Game? That, that, that's a good touch, because it's, it's a road song. <laughs> okay, let's do that. And uh, Dana, thank you so much. Everyone go to DanaFuchs.com. The CD is Songs from the Road. What a delight it is to talk to you. I've been a fan actually since um, I saw you in Across the Universe. And then oh. I went back and got caught up on some of your other stuff. And it's a pleasure to have the chance to have spoken with you, Dana. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. Steve, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me and for the wonderful support. It means so much. Whiskey bound on a whistling train. Another town in it all the same. Take a bow and they call your name What's the price you're gonna pay for fame?